plague could get into people's blood and it could turn their limbs black. When the plague struck the Roman Empire, it went on to kill 25 million people. They called it the Great Mortality, a plague so devastating it erased nearly one in every two lives across Europe within just six years, between 1347 and 1353. Some towns were emptied entirely, their names lost to overgrowth. In total, it's estimated that over 75 million people died across Europe, Asia, and North Africa, reshaping global history in a matter of months. But here's what makes it even more terrifying. We never really knew where it started. For more than six and a half centuries, the origin of the Black Death has remained one of the most disturbing unanswered questions in human history. Historians blamed the Mongol Empire. Others pointed fingers at merchant ships from China. But every theory had holes. Until now. Because a new breakthrough in ancient DNA analysis has revealed a forgotten graveyard in the mountains of Kyrgyzstan, where a few decaying teeth have finally exposed the true ground zero. Not Venice, not Constantinople, but a quiet valley on the edge of the Tian Shan range, where plague first jumped from animals to humans, and then to the rest of the world. Before we trace the path of history's deadliest outbreak, let us know in the comments. What's your theory? Trade, war, or something more hidden? And if you want more buried truths unearthed with hard science, Subscribe to Stone and Bone. We reveal the stories written in bone, stone, and ancient blood. When we think of the Black Death, we imagine ghost towns in Europe, doctors in beaked masks, and rats pouring through cobblestone alleys. But this plague wasn't just a European nightmare. It was a continental collapse. The numbers still make historians shiver up to 200 million deaths worldwide across multiple outbreaks. The first major wave, the so-called second pandemic, exploded in the 14th century. But it wouldn't be the last. The same bacterial strain would keep returning in London, Constantinople, Cairo, and even China for over 400 years. And yet, despite its scale, what we call the Black Death was a mystery pathogen for most of modern history. Scientists knew it was likely caused by Yersinia pestis, the same bacterium behind later plague outbreaks. But where it originated and how it entered the human world remained a gaping blank on the map. Old maps showed dotted lines for trade, but none of them marked a moment of ignition where this monster leapt out of the wild and into our cities. That moment, the true beginning, wasn't where anyone expected. For centuries, historians believed the Black Death reached Europe via the Crimean port of Kaffa in 1346. Genoese traders fleeing a Mongol siege supposedly brought the disease to the Mediterranean in their rat-infested ships. From there, it tore across Italy, France, and the Holy Roman Empire like wildfire. But there was a problem. When researchers started sequencing plague DNA from medieval graves in Europe, something didn't add up. These strains already showed small genetic mutations, a sign that the bacteria had been evolving for years before it ever reached the Black Sea. In other words, Europe got it late. This forced scientists to look eastward. Some speculated China, others suggested India or the steppes of Mongolia. But these were theories, not facts. And without physical evidence, the trail always went cold. Meanwhile, buried in a Russian museum archive, a forgotten excavation report from 1886 quietly waited to be noticed. It described a cluster of graves in Kyrgyzstan, dated to 1338, almost a decade before Europe's first outbreak. Several of those graves mentioned a single chilling word, pestilence. No one paid much attention. It was too vague, too far flung from the usual narrative. But that single word, carved in ancient Syriac script, was about to become the most important clue in the history of pandemics.
In the summer of 1886, Russian archaeologists dug into two modest cemeteries near Lake Isik Kul in what is now Kyrgyzstan. The area was once home to a small Nestorian Christian community, Silk Road traders who lived at the crossroads of East and West. Among dozens of graves, several were dated precisely to 1338 and 1339. One, in particular, bore an inscription in ancient Syriac that read, This is the tomb of the believer Sanmak. He died of pestilence. That single word, pestilence, stood out. In medieval usage, it was a catch-all term for epidemic death, often reserved for diseases that arrived fast, killed violently, and left entire villages in silence. The archaeologists recorded everything, the bones were packed up and shipped to a museum in St. Petersburg, and then forgotten. Over a century later, a Scottish historian named Philip Slavin stumbled upon the dusty reports. What struck him wasn't just the single grave, it was the pattern. Within a two-year span, over 100 individuals from the same community had died and been buried. Multiple gravestones repeated the same ominous word. Slavin wasn't a geneticist. But he understood data, and this spike was no ordinary blip. It looked like a localized mass mortality event, one that predated Europe's outbreak by nearly a decade. It couldn't be coincidence. It had to be connected. Philip Slavin had a theory, but no way to prove it. Historians can trace patterns and anomalies, but to confirm a pandemic, he needed help from another field paleogenetics. So he reached out to researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany, one of the world's leading centers for ancient DNA research. These scientists weren't just studying Yersinia pestis. They were building a global genetic family tree of the plague bacterium. By 2022, they had sequenced over 1,300 samples from both modern and ancient sources everything from European plague pits to wild rodents in Mongolia. And in doing so, they had discovered something shocking. Around the early 1300s, the plague bacterium had undergone a big bang of genetic diversification. From a single ancestor, four major branches emerged, one of which would soon devastate Europe. But where was that ancestor? Slavin's forgotten graves offered the perfect opportunity. The team extracted DNA from the teeth of seven individuals, nature's time capsules, often preserving traces of bloodborne pathogens for centuries. The results were stunning. Three of the seven contained Yersinia pestis, the unmistakable fingerprint of the plague. Even more remarkably, when they sequenced its genome, they found it sat exactly at the branching point of all later strains. It wasn't a descendant. It was the original. So the graveyard near Lake Isik Kul wasn't just the site of a tragic outbreak. It was ground zero. The bacterium found in those 1,338 victims wasn't just an early strain. It was the ancestral strain, the one from which all later pandemic lineages would descend. But that led to a bigger question. How did it begin? What unleashed it from its hiding place in nature? This wasn't a new germ. Yersinia pestis had existed for thousands of years, silently circulating in wild rodent populations, particularly marmots, voles, and gerbils. The Lake Isik Kul region is part of what scientists call a natural plague reservoir, places where the bacterium thrives in animal hosts without necessarily causing human disease. For centuries, it stayed in the shadows. Then, something changed. Scientists believe a climatic shift, possibly due to a warming cycle in the 1330s, caused vegetation to flourish. That triggered a rodent population boom, especially among marmots, prime hosts for plague-infected fleas. As rodents multiplied, so did fleas. And with more fleas jumping to new hosts, the risk of zoonotic spillover, a jump from animals to humans, skyrocketed. All it would take is a trapper skinning an infected marmot. One bite, one flea, and the deadliest pandemic in human history would begin in silence. 
The Black Death didn't begin with a scream. It began with a bloom. The region surrounding Lake Isikul sits within the Tian Shan Mountains, a stunning yet rugged wilderness stretching across modern-day Kyrgyzstan. It's also part of what scientists call a natural plague reservoir, an ecological zone where Yersinia pestis circulates quietly among wild animal populations. In this case, the likely hosts were marmots, voles, gerbils, and other rodents common to Central Asia. These animals live in complex underground burrows where fleas thrive, passing the bacterium back and forth without ever threatening humans, until something changes. Researchers believe that just before 1338, the region experienced a shift, perhaps a series of warmer, wetter springs. This mild climate would have triggered a vegetation explosion, boosting food supplies and causing a rodent population boom. More rodents meant more fleas. More fleas meant more chances for Yersinia pestis to mutate and spread. And in such a dense, thriving ecosystem, all it took was one tiny spark. That spark likely came in the form of zoonotic spillover, when a pathogen jumps from an animal to a human. It could have happened during the skinning of a marmot, or the handling of raw meat, or even through a single infected flea biting the wrong host. The people of Karajigach weren't just villagers. They were Silk Road traders, well-traveled, well-connected, and exposed to wildlife through trade, food, and daily survival. They would have hunted marmots for fur and meat, unknowingly inviting the pathogen into their bodies and homes. Once inside a human, Yersinia pestis did what it always does. It moved fast. It shut down organs. It spread through blood, breath, and bite, and it left no survivors. But it didn't stop there, because the people of Karajagach were also connected to a vast network stretching across continents. And soon, what started in one valley was about to hit the road, hidden in the most unassuming of passengers. Not people, not camels, but rats. When the Genoese ships docked in Messina, Venice, and Marseille in 1347, they brought more than cargo. They brought Yersinia pestis, and Europe was utterly unprepared. Unlike Central Asia, where plague had circulated for centuries in rodent populations, Europe had no natural immunity, no memory of the bacteria, no surviving generations who had developed resistance, and cities across the continent were perfect incubators for disaster. Medieval Europe was filthy by modern standards. Streets overflowed with garbage. Rats thrived in cellars, barns, and marketplaces. Fleas hopped between host and host, rat to cat, cat to human, with no barriers in between. In places like Florence and London, population density was extreme. Whole families lived in single-room homes. A disease that spread via flea bite, and later through respiratory droplets, moved unseen and unstopped. Worse, no one knew what caused it. Some blamed bad air. Others accused minorities, leading to brutal pogroms against Jews across Europe. Doctors had no antibiotics, no quarantines until it was far too late. Within two years, half of Europe's population was gone. Cities like Paris lost as many as 800 people per day. The death toll reached 25 million in Europe alone, with the global total likely exceeding 75 million. But it had all started from a single, overlooked spillover. In a graveyard, no one had taken seriously, until now. That forgotten graveyard in Kyrgyzstan didn't just solve a medieval mystery, it showed what happens when science, archaeology, and history join forces. The discovery of Yersinia pestis DNA in teeth from 1338 not only revealed the true origin of the Black Death, it mapped the exact genetic ancestor from which all future plague outbreaks would emerge. And this is only the beginning. Thanks to advancements in paleogenomics, researchers are now able to sequence entire genomes from remains over 1,000 years old, not just of humans, but of the microbes that killed them. 
we're learning that pandemics don't appear out of nowhere. They simmer in animal populations for decades, sometimes centuries, before a change in environment, trade, or behavior lets them slip into the human world. Sound familiar? This isn't just about the 14th century. Understanding how the plague began helps us predict and prevent future pandemics, whether it's Ebola, SARS, or something yet to emerge. It also reframes how we think about history. The Black Death didn't begin in Europe. It didn't even begin in the ports. It began in a marmot burrow in the wild highlands of Central Asia, in a trading hub whose name most of us had never heard. Until now. If this changed the way you see history, subscribe to Stone and Bone. We bring the forgotten back to light with DNA, ruins, and rock-solid research. And in the comments, tell us, do you think history will keep repeating itself? Or are we finally listening to its warnings?